And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Funny. Yes. Are you ready for another exciting installment of Bunny Versus, everyone's favorite podcast segment starring the incomparable, the illustrious, the indescribable Bunny Williams? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you revved up? Are you ready to go? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, then, without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. And now here is your host, Bunny Williams, take it away, Bunny. And I hope everybody is enjoying our 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 very 420 festive episode. Yes. But uh, I think I have discovered the reason why to a very very important question. Okay. <clears throat> I think I definitively have it. I think I have found exactly why Brendan Fraser is so beloved and relatable. Okay. Hit me with it. All right. Well, I would like you to pull up a picture of Brendan Fraser. Everybody listening, I would like you to bring up a picture of Brendan Fraser. Any picture of Brendan Fraser. Anyone will do. Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to open Office. What, what the fuck? Okay, screw it. I'm doing it on my phone. Hey, I see Dan's in the room. Hey, Dan. Okay. Uh, okay, I've got a picture of Brendan Fraser. Okay. Any picture of Brandon Brendan Fraser that any of you are looking at right now, if you look, you can see that there is a level of panic right behind his eyes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is it. That is what we are all relating to. Everybody. Everybody understands that level of panic behind Brendan Fraser's eyes. Yeah, that is, uh, he's, he's like a, a handsome actor and also a walking panic attack. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he looks like, he looks like he's about to break down at any second. And any I point. get that. Yeah. You know, yeah, he, he is going to, like, like right after that picture snaps, you get the feeling like he probably just lost it somehow. Most likely cried. Yeah. Yeah. I think he really nailed it with that one. I really think you did. That's a yeah. good that that's a good assessment. So I felt that that was important, and and I, I should bring it to the podcast. And how have you been, sir? Uh good. My my wife was gone on a work trip for over a week. Uh, their flight was canceled due to weather, because at the time that my wife was supposed to fly from Schenectady to back to Oklahoma where we live for some reason. Uh, we, were, we were getting some tornadoes. We got some tornadoes this week. One got very close to us. That was exciting. Uh, so they canceled her flight. Uh, my wife was supposed to come in on Monday. She ended up coming in late on Thursday. Uh, but... <coughs> Now that now that she's back and we're back together here in the house, my wife is done with the work trip. We decided that we were really going to party this weekend. So when I woke up this morning, 
and watched A Big Hand for the Little Lady for like the second time, I think. Uh, I wasn't hung over. I was just still drunk. Okay. Which is always fun. Uh, so I think the hangover is coming now. I think that's what I'm dealing with right now. I don't drink a lot. But, you know, my wife and I were just happy that, that, you know, she was back from her trip and we were just spending time together. And um, I'm quite relieved that my wife is gone because it means that, A, I can go back to movies. B, uh, I will actually get help around the house. But the main thing is uh, I don't have to dress up every night. Okay. El- my my five year old was very upset that mom was leaving for so long. So uh, they asked if uh, other mother, which is my female persona, could come every night and make dinner and tuck them in. And at first, I thought it was sweet, but. Eventually, it just started getting really tiring. Like, sometimes I just want to be in sweats. But every night, I had to become a glamorous woman. And it was fun. And I think it did help me, you know, because I'm very much uh, gender fluid, but male-leaning gender fluid. Most of the time, I'm just a dude. And every once in a while, I'm a woman. But... Um, Taking care of my kids really helped me get in touch with my feminine side. So now I can can be a woman when I want to, not when my daughter, when my my youngest child says I have to. So that that was pretty much my entire week. Uh, One of the videos that I did on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash storytime with MR Steve, uh, I was really proud of because... I, I substituted the regular opening with, it still had the same graphic, Storytime with Mr. Steve, and it still had the same music, but the video was Dude Loves Titan Tron from the WWF. Okay. And I was like, let's see if anyone actually pays attention to the things I do on my YouTube channel. So I was really proud of that. It came, it, it came out really well, exactly how I thought it would in my head. So, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy that my wife is back. My wife is, <coughs> really just, just grounds me. Uh, my wife took my two youngest to Target this afternoon. So I have, uh, I, I believe Amber and... Mal are in the house right now, but they're in their own separate rooms. This is the most silence that has been in this house for a very long time. And it is nice. It's weird. It's weird during the breaks. I don't have someone to go to and annoy, which is something that I do during the breaks where it's like, okay, I'm going to take this tablet and watch um, Bunny and Steve's break time hijinks and just go annoy someone so there's no one here for me to annoy which is very upsetting but uh but yeah so so that's that is what i've been up to how are you bunny uh like hardly nothing to report i kind of jerked around all week you know playing around with different things running little experiments here and there. Nothing, like, practical. Just having some fun. But that's yeah. about it. <coughs> it, was a, it was a slow week. Jeannie's been sick all week. Lame. So that's been an issue. Yeah, um, Eleanor was sick at the beginning of um, this week, this past week. They vomited... And um, I'm not saying that Jeannie got Eleanor sick. Yeah. Because we're in two different states, but I'm I'm thinking Jeannie got yeah Eleanor sick. Okay. That's the only answer. 
That's the only answer. So, Eleanor got genie sickness. And I worked my way through the Phantasm movies again. Yay! I, I, I find it's, I find it's like, God, what do you want to call it? It's like barely a story. Yeah. It's through line? I don't know. I, I find it more interesting than the other movies, like Friday the 13th or Halloween. I mean, they're all bad. Yes. You know? But Tall Man is closer to a Xenobite than Jason or Freddy or anything like that. Yeah. Well, um, 80s horror is very bad, except for one film, which we can all agree is a masterpiece, and that is uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Yes. Because uh, there aren't a lot of gay slashers out there. No. But that movie is so gay, and I love it. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about The Lost Boys. I watched The Lost Boys again, and Joel Schumacher had a lot of fucking fun with the Corey Haim character. Yeah. You know, like, like Corey Haim is the kid that Joel Schumacher wanted to be. Yeah. Fucking, you know, fucking Corey Haim, the last time I watched it again, I mean, he is, like, so subtly gay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He has a costume change. The last time I watched Lost Boys, fairly recently, I noticed he has a costume change every fucking scene. <laughs> and it is yeah. always something. Once. One scene was jeans and a t-shirt. One. Everything else was a fabulous fucking outfit. Very extra. Like, no kid dresses like this. It's, yeah. just, it's just not... And, like, we're talking, like, 20 costume changes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There you go. Okay. Having some computer issues, but they are fine now. And I love how it's there, and it's so just subtle that nobody really talks about it because nobody really notices it. Yeah. And I think that that's really cool. I'm really glad they didn't franchise that movie. Lost Boys? Yeah. Oh, they tried. There's Lost Boys 3. Yeah. Yeah. But but it 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 was but but it, I'm talking about like in theaters. Yeah. Like technically there is a From Dust Till Dawn franchise, but how many of those were direct to VHS for shit's sake, you know? Yeah. But I'm so I'm glad that they didn't, you know, release it in theaters like The Lost Boys Three: The Return of uh, Saxophone Guy, you know, fucking. They oh, made well, we one. Didn't get, we didn't get Lost Boys Two until like, pfft, fuck, what, two thousand? Two thousand eight or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that movie in theaters. You did the tribe. Mm -hmm. Man. No, uh, I saw I saw the Lost Boys in theaters. Oh, I saw the Lost Boys in the theaters too. Yeah, yeah. I was a bit young, but I remember seeing it. Yeah, and I remember was, being. Fun. Yeah, I love that movie. Also filmed at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. And except and except for Star Wars, what other slasher movie has Jawa? Besides Phantasm. Yeah. Okay. I love popcorn. Yeah. Hi. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent right now. Are you wearing a robe or are you wearing a snuggie? It is a robe. Okay. I am not opposed to snuggies though. 
I need a podcasting this, this is globe. This friendly environment. Good. Good. Because a lot of a lot of places nowadays are um, snuggy discriminatory. Yeah. So I'm I'm happy about that. I'm not at a hundred percent right now, but I'm trying. <laughs> so what the chap is going on today? Uh, this week's Steve historic uh, historic approximations has to do with Suzanne Plachette and. A very serious te- British teen drama series. A long-running, and again, I'd like to once again emphasize, a very serious British teen drama. Okay. Very serious. <clears throat> That's what this week's chap is. It's a good one. <clears throat> well... I don't think I have anything else. Do you have anything else? I've tried watching a little bit of <coughs> Recep Eva Deke 5. Oh, you did? Yeah. I found a copy of the movie with subtitles, and I'm like, I'll watch a little bit of it. <clears throat> I likened, before I had seen the film, I likened it to like an earnest movie. Yeah. But... Now that I've tried to watch it, uh, I have a bit more of an understanding of the Recep Eva D character. Imagine if they made six Urkel movies. Okay. That is the Recep Eva D Turkish film franchise. So he's he's a he's a Turkish Urkel. No, but Which he. It's kind of he, fun to say. Turkish, Turkish Urkel. Urkel. Turkish Urkel. Ur- Turkish Urkel. Turkish Urkel. Turkish Urkel. That's a lot of yeah. fun. That's, that's almost as much fun to say as Waititi. Ta- oh, I can't say his name now. Taika Waititi? Taika Waititi, yes. <laughs> that, I wonder that, if, his name is just so much fun to say. I wonder what Taika Waititi thinks of Turkish Urkel. Yes. <laughs> you can tell this is episode 420. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Uh, uh, you know how annoying Urkel is? Yes. Like, the annoying breakout character of a sitcom. And you give that character a movie, and it's so successful that it becomes a franchise, that is Recep Evadik. It's okay. really fucking annoying. I haven't been this annoyed since Fred the movie. <laughs> I watched like 15 minutes of it, and I'm like, I, I've got to fucking tap out here. <laughs> I, I'm not going to watch this unless I have to for the podcast, which we eventually will. Fred? I couldn't find... We watched I, Fred? Uh, 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 Recept. Yeah, Recep. Uh, we, I couldn't find Recep Evadik 1, because I was able to find 5, so... Well, see, that's the problem. Yeah, we're going to be... How can you be watch 5? How can you possibly understand what's going in, in, in Evadik 5 if you haven't watched 1, 2, 4? Exactly. But I'll keep looking for Recep Evadik 1. Um, the Force Awakens. The Force Recep Awakens. Evadik, The Force Awakens. Yeah. Um, and that's all I've got. All right. Well, let's head, head on over there. I just, I'm just glad I was able to break the Brendan Fraser news. You know, and very happy about that. But let's get on over and take a good chef. That that sounds wonderful. Yes. Absolutely wonderful. So until next week. Come on. You know. You know. 
Self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. I love that. <laughs> and cut on that. 